Hello, welcome to our demonstration of the specimen registration software that uh, we at IIID use to register samples so that they can be used in our uh, LIMS system, our laboratory uh, management system. Um, the first thing that we have to do before we register samples is to create a project to put those samples into. Um, these projects um, are created um, through consultation with um, collaborators and um, certain uh, people are given roles and um, you know agreed upon roles that um, that they can perform within the project so to create a new project um, we can see that um, create new project uh, at the top left is is selected so for demonstration purposes we can put in um, demonstration project. Uh, you can put in any description that you like. And um, so we need to um, choose a, a type and a status for our our projects as well. So we've got a s set of um, predefined types that we can choose from and statuses. Um, if we forget to put those in and uh, click on save project you can see that um, project type and status must be set. So <coughs> uh, we'll choose a type and a status. And Okay, so um, the system will automatically also um, detect if we've already um, had a project of the same name. So if if I put in SHCS HCV, um, which is the name of an existing project, I should point out that all existing projects are listed in this uh, listed in this left panel here. So it should tell us that um, a project with the same name has already been registered. So if I change that back to demo, demo project um, and click save, it should um, come up with project saved and give us a project number, which is in this case is 1189. Um, so at that point, um, you can register samples in this project. Uh, but if you wanted to, you can um, add people um, or add staff and assign them roles in this project. So um, we we may have uh, we've got our list of people that are um, that are acquired from our database here. So we can um, <coughs> we can add them to roles in a in a project. So if if I choose myself and um, this uh, role dialog pops up so um, we've got a list of um, predefined roles that we can select from so uh, from chief investigator primary contact laboratory contact um, member um, these are our internal triple ID roles but um, you can define these roles in the database to be whatever you like so we can just say um, that I'm the data manager and um, add myself to the role so you, uh, we can see that there. Um, the next part down here is um, defining what we're actually going to do in this project. Uh, this is optional um, so um, if you want to fill it out you can uh, choose from our predefined tests as to what um, what tests are going to be performed on the samples that we will eventually receive. Um, so we can put in something like, um, you know, any kind of test and add that to our project. Um, and down the bottom here you can see um, expected sample types. This is where we select um, sample types that we expect to register into our project so so if we say we we expect to receive uh, 100 plasma samples that's this is just for an example purpose um, and 
we can go add to project and then save that project so now our project is is fully registered uh, we are able to um, actually assign um, samples to our project and usually um, <coughs> samples come in through shipments so we click on our shipments tab at the um, at the top of the application and so uh, when we've, we, we get our list of shipments here for um, you know for all projects but if you want to filter um, the list of shipments you can so uh, as you can see at the moment we don't have any shipments with the name uh, 1189 in the title so um, we can create a new shipment for this uh, project so this is basically saying that we um, we have to set up a, a shipment before um, and assign samples, import samples for that shipment so if we just call that um, uh, 1189 shipment 1 and you can set up a uh, sent date and a uh, receival date uh, if you like um, so uh, and we also have to um, well our shipments come in on something called a uh, specimen invent inventory um, our, we get our collaborators to send us these uh, specimen inventories to um, to detail the list of samples that they're going to send us so um, Linda will show you uh, what our um, specimen inventory looks like yep. so we've got uh, um, an empty specimen inventory here so we've got um, uh, certain columns that that need to be filled out so one subject identifier needs to be filled out which is meant to uniquely identify a subject or, or a patient for that project the sample identifier is uh, meant to uniquely identify um, a sample that has come from a subject and a collection date um, which is important in longitudinal studies where you want to know um, uh, the time that a sample was taken or bled from from a subject uh, sample types important as well so uh, we've got a list of um, allowable sample types such as plasma, PBMC, whole blood, uh, volume and volume unit um, so um, Linda has got a a spreadsheet that has already been filled out uh, for the purposes of, of this demonstration so if we open that um, we can see we can see that this has already been filled out so this is telling us that um, from subject one we've received a, um, a sample with this name um, that was collected on that date and as of type plasma um, volume is specified etc um, these uh, we, we can also specify uh, locations for these um, for these samples that um, that the samples will arrive in um, this one also has a time point as well which may be important for longitudinal studies and it's got a, a subject demographic um, date of birth information so we'll show you how to import this data into our um, our limb system so if I just close that and go back to the registration software um, so these documents uh, we can we can assign any kind of document to the shipment it, um, so if we go add shipment document we can assign this document to our shipment so 
um, if we just select our mm -hmm. yeah so if we just select our um, spreadsheet that we just showed you and um, as we can see that that's that's added to the list of our our shipment documents so we can save that in our shipment We should come up with a confirmation dialog that our shipment has been saved. So um, we can now see our shipment in the list of shipments. Um, and we select that shipment and then go um, to the add samples. This is where we import um, the samples to into our shipment. Um, so we select the document that we've just assigned to our shipment and go uh, and click on load selected document. So in this instance uh, we can see that this has just imported the list of um, samples from our directly from our spreadsheet. Um, it it tries to work out where the um, the headers are for our um, our spreadsheet by looking at uh, the sample type column so it finds the sample type column and and starts uh, importing from there so as as we can see um, if if we click into the um, into the uh, grid you can see that there's some unrecognized parameters um, we've got a defined set of parameters that the database recognizes as um, as sample metadata so um, these ones aren't recognized by the system but uh, w we can use this software to help us define uh, what this metadata is supposed to be so if we click on the header um, one of the headers that it doesn't recognize we've we've got a, a list of um, categories of data that um, metadata types that um, we can um, assign to this column header so in this case we want um, sample metadata I mean sorry we want um, a subject identifier and in this case it's subject identifier 1 and uh, the same thing over here so um, that's actually a sample identifier so we want to actually tell the system that this is referring to sample identifier 1 so if we click into another cell we can see we're still we've still got a column uh, viral load which is um, not recognized by the system so if we right click on viral load um, that comes under test results so we can select the relevant um, field there and click onto another cell and now we've got parameter 3 and parameter 4 where uh, that's telling us it's not recognized by the database and will be ignored uh, that's fine because um, we haven't actually put anything into parameter 3 and parameter 4. So at this point we can save these samples to the shipment by clicking on that button and um, okay uh, we're missing a sample type so we we can choose our sample type DNA there We'll try again, and it tells us that manifest rows have select, uh, successfully uh, been saved. So, um, as we can see now, uh, this is back to our shipment screen on the main registration screen. We can see that we've color coded some of our um, our samples. These are not yet registered, ready for our LIM system to use, so we have to um, we have to sort of sanity check this data before registering these samples into uh, into the system. So, um, as we can see, this one is yellow, so um, it means it's it's non-critical information, but it's just um, helpful information telling us that um, the uh, the subject that that we are registering for this for this uh, manifest row is the same as the subject in the first row. That's fine. Yep. Okay. And and that also has a different sample ID. 
which is which is okay at this point. 